singing the request. And the first song is a request by somebody you know very well, me. <laughs> and we're going to sing this good old gospel song when the saints go marching in. So let's stand and join our voices in singing. The third announcement I want to remind you 
is that today at 1030, uh, we have a very important congregational meeting that's going to be taking place. Um, most of you, if not all of you, should have received a letter from the church. We have had a, I'm just quoting from that letter, we have had a unanimous um, nomination from our church call council committee to the church council uh, in regards to recommending Pastor Stoops uh, to be uh, provided, invited to call to become our head pastor. Uh, from that same letter, it is my understanding that there was a majority uh, vote uh, by the council to accept that uh, recommendation by the church call council. And so we will be meeting as a congregation in accordance with our constitution and bylaws today at 1030 uh, to go to a congregational vote on that um, uh, offering of a recommendation. Uh, our president, uh, Council President uh, Mark Getting, I'm sure will be uh, heading that up at 10:30. Uh, if you are unable to stay, <clears throat> uh, I do understand that there is a way to uh, vote uh, underneath the uh, overhang, like a drive-through type of, of vote. No, you don't have to mail it in. You don't have to worry about the United States Postal Offices or anything with any of the confusion that's been going on there. You can do this right here. Someone will hand you a pallet. Uh, you can vote. You can hand it right back to them. You don't have to mail it in. So you don't have to register or worry or anything like that. So uh, I encourage all who can to stay. Um, we will be practicing social distancing. We'll use uh, the fellowship hall if necessary is my understanding. But uh, uh, it's a very exciting time uh, for our church. Uh, and uh, so... While we're going through the service, when, uh, there is time to pray. Uh, I ask that you include in your prayers today uh, a very heartfelt thought and prayer about moving our church forward and asking God to reach down and touch your heart and give you direction. Uh, let us all remember, and you've heard me say this before, standing right here, this is not Mike Ford's church. This, is not, this was not Pastor Dave's church. This is his church. And during the service today, uh, pray to our Heavenly Father, our Lord, our Savior. Ask him to touch your heart and guide you as we continue through this time to move his church forward. It is God's church. So, uh, again, I encourage you to look through your worship folder. Look at all the schedule for the week, uh, all the announcements. Uh, I did see Mark from then. Brother Gay, do you have anything you want to add about? Uh, uh, it's not great. It's not going to be aware of it, but I guess it's not very out. We will have some water available. I know it's going to be a while that we can be here. It isn't as cool in here as it is outside. So, again, if anybody wants some water, we got a little bit of water available. Thank you, brother. Thank you very much, my friend. Okay, with no other announcements at this time, please, if you are able, please rise and let us come before God for the reason for what we enter His church, His home, His house for on uh, every Sunday. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hid, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. If we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. But if we confess our sins, God, who is faithful and just, will forgive our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Now take a moment and look into your heart and take this time of reflection. Most merciful God, we confess that we are honored to sin and cannot forgive ourselves. We have sinned against you and thought of word and deed by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us. Forgive us.
the mercy of Almighty God, Jesus Christ, was given to die for you. And for his sake, God forgives you all your sins. To those who believe in Jesus Christ, he gives the power to become children of God and bestows on them the Holy Spirit. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And also with you. Please turn where you're at, wave. Uh, I guess we're supposed to be practicing social distancing, but uh, greet your neighbors and uh, uh, with a hearty welcome and hello. Uh, maybe greet uh, someone new to our congregation today and provide, please, uh, that love to all our brothers and sisters in Christ.
and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. Let us now pray together the words that our Lord Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. given for you. Then as you give the wine or grape juice, say, the blood of Christ shed for you. This is done so that each person can be reassured and believe that Jesus Christ loves them so much that he gave his very body and life blood unto death on the cross. We can totally trust and believe that Christ will give us the everlasting life and salvation he has promised to all who believe. Now receive God's communion blessing. May the true body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in his grace. Let us now pray together. We give you thanks, Almighty God, that you have refreshed us with the healing power of this gift of life. And we pray in your mercy that you strengthen us through this gift in faith towards you and in fervent love toward one another. For the sake of Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. My mom requested a song called Lord, Hear My. And it was written by a woman named Fanny Crosby. And Fanny Crosby was a blind songwriter. And she probably wrote about half of them. You can be seated. You've been standing a long time. And it has profound, profound words. Lord, hear am I. It's a scary prayer, isn't it? Lord, hear am I. I'm just going to have the choir sing the first verse of chorus so you can become familiar with it. And then I want you to join with us on the last two verses. Lord, hear and pray.
Please remain standing now as we hear God's word today, this morning. <coughs> Leave it. 
to the wrath of God, for it is written, Vengeance is mine, I will repay, says the Lord. To the contrary, if your enemy is hungry, feed him. If he is thirsty, give him something to drink. For by doing so, you will heap burning coals on his head. Do not be overcome by evil, but overcome evil with good. Here adds the second reading. Forever and ever. 
If you read the, the 66 books with these numerous stories in the story, God's Word, from Genesis through Revelations, it is clear that God seeks us whom he calls to glorify his name. Why are you? Creation. God created us and made us. This world, this temple, he put us here in his image. His will be done. This love, this joy, this peace, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. This peace was broken. We didn't have the fall. Creation didn't the fall. We rebelled. That opened up the door for death and destruction, like a tooth became. It put a strain, to say the least, on our relationships. The one we have with God, and even the one we have with each other. It's evident in the world today. But then we have this redemption. The evidence shows through the Old Testament with the kingdom that shows that the Old Testament that people were building and God put them through a process of refining from Abraham the covenant, the deal, the deal that we can never keep keeps getting broken. We knew the promise was coming of the Messiah. He will rescue us. And there's the redemption in the New Testament. The good news. God comes from man, fully God and fully man. John, the first chapter, the first verse to the fifth verse says, In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was with God in the beginning. Through Him all things were made. Without Him nothing was made that has been made. In Him was life, and that life was the light of all mankind. The light that shines in the darkness, and the darkness has not overcome. Last Sunday, I spoke about how the Apostle Peter confessed that Jesus came and the Son of, of the living God. Based on this, Jesus is going to build on him. He, he confesses who he is. Peter tells him he is the Messiah. So with this, Jesus says, I will build my church on this rock. Jesus preached the good news of the kingdom. Jesus went out into the towns and, and villages to teach. He taught and he prioritized his spiritual needs. He healed people of their sicknesses and diseases. He met their physical needs. He took care of both the physical and spiritual needs. He met people where they were at. He showed us what and how to do this. He showed us the goodness with his life, his life of fullness, of miracles. His death, his resurrection confers this. It grants us this benefit, the covenant of faithfulness to us, a gift. So now we all are invited to join him. Join him in his kingdom, God's kingdom. Not by what we do, by what he has done. We call this grace. Now, as I read the scripture reading from Matthew, the 16th chapter, verses 21 through 28, I remember last week reading and teaching that Peter confessed that Jesus is the Messiah. And it turns around, this time, as Jesus foretells his death and resurrection, in today's reading, Peter misses the mark. The point of, why are you? It says right, Matthew 16, 21 through the 23rd, it says, from the time Jesus began to show his disciples that he must go to Jerusalem and suffer many things from the elders 
and the chief priests and scribes and be killed on the third day, be raised. And Peter took him aside and began to rebuke him, saying, Far be it from you, Lord. This shall never happen to you. But he turned to Peter and said, Get behind me, Satan. You are a hindrance to me, for you are not setting your mind on things of God, but on things of man. Peter missed the point at that moment in time. The amazing grace given to us, the only way to enter the kingdom of heaven, to enter into the story we read about, study, listen. God became man just like us in order to be like him. Mark Twain, the author, once said, the two most important days in your life are the day you are born and the day you find out why. Again, we are called to glorify God in whatever we do. Matthew 16, 24 through the 28th verse. Take up your cross and follow Jesus. Then Jesus told his disciples, if anyone would come after me, let him deny himself and take up his cross, cross and follow me. For whoever would save his life will lose it, but whoever loses his life for my sake will find it. For what will it profit a man if he gains the whole world and forfeits his soul? Or what shall a man give in return for his soul? For the Son of Man is going to come with angels in the glory of his Father, and then he will repay each person according to what he has done. Truly, I say to you, there are some standing here who will not taste death until they see the Son of Man coming again in his kingdom. In Jesus, God is for us, with us, one of us and in us. Remember, some time back I mentioned the book, I'm Not a Fan. It's about following Jesus. It's about being more intentional in what you do as a follower in following Jesus. Over the last couple of years in my journaling, I've closed my thoughts and my prayers with two questions Jesus, what are you up to today? And how would you have me join you? Why am I standing here and delivering this message? This was not on my radar, remember? So why are you? Well, I can tell you. Expect him to answer you. And do not be surprised when he does. And receive it. Joining him on his mission and asking what is it you want and up to today. Put it into your story, God's story, your story. Again, why are you? Your core identity, your core mission, your core position. Where are you? Who are you? Why are you? We are uniquely created and crafted by God, and then he gives us this unique Identity, this unique mission, this unique position. So if you're having a hard time understanding this or skeptical about this, just turn to Ephesians 2.10. For we are his workmanship, created in Christ, Jesus for good works, which God prepared beforehand that we should walk in them. God has authored our story. It's so important to read his story at times, either alone or other times when we come together. We need to know his story. To even begin or understand our story. I said last week, you can't expect to have a good relationship with anyone if you're only meeting once a week. Or if you only talk once in a while. Let me suggest something. And I read about this. Martin Luther. It's referred to as the barber question. Some of you may know this. So it's a reminder to you. 
For some of us, this may be the first time you hear this. The story goes like this. One day, while he was getting his hair cut, Martin Luther was asked by his barber, Peter Beckendorf, Dr. Luther, how do you pray? In answer to his question, Luther sent Beckendorf's letter. A letter of 40 pages printed in length. Luther's prayer, his plan, as it turned out, was a combination of Bible study and prayer. In order to give his barber an easy plan by which to formulate prayers on the thoughts of his Bible study, Luther said he should ask four questions to the text and then weave them into his prayer based on the answers, scriptures given to him. What does this Bible lesson teach me? What's the main theme? What does it teach me to be thankful for the specific gospel? What does it teach me to confess a particular sin? What does it teach me to ask for the sanctification? Luther's four big barber questions are not only a great way to develop a productive prayer life, but there are also a good way to just study the Bible. This goes along with the questions, why are you? Again, our unique identity, our unique mission, our unique position. Most people lack an identity. Their purpose, their mission, or their position. In this kingdom because they have no relationship with God. See, Jesus provided us this redemption. When he came and before his ascension, he created a new community, the church. It's universal. It's universal mission. We're all invited to making disciples, to be part of this, growing God's kingdom, sharing his love. We, we are his hands and his feet. This love and action we can share with each other. Romans chapter 12, 9 through the 13 verse, it says, Let love be genuine, harbor what is evil, hold fast to what is good. Love one another with brotherly affection. Outdo one another with Showing honor. Wouldn't it be remarkable to do that? Up doing each other with love. Do not be slothful in zeal in hope. Be patient in tribulation. Be constant in prayer. Contribute to the needs of the saints and seek to show hospitality. Plus those nurses in the hospital, hospitality. Those doctors. Remember, Jesus has shown us how to live, how to treat each other. He took care of their physical and spiritual needs, remember? Last week, I asked that you prayfully consider helping others across the globe with building their community, with a building of a home, but deep in Africa, a sister church from us, that we share friendship, He's leading people to Christ through this pandemic. I mentioned that people are coming to Christ through this COVID because they're afraid to die. A modest means of living. He's going to build a home for his mom and for his two adopted children and communities living in for $3,000. And we're going to help him do that. So I thank you for those who've pitched in already. But again, pray for you to consider maybe contributing so we can send them home. Help send food so they can grow their own food. Blessings and peace to you. We continue to support others in our own community. The world we live in is a violent, one of the most violent in recorded history now. It's starting to get there. The number of us calling ourselves Christians is declining. Those claiming to be a follower, even, is even less. Romans 12. Verses 14 through 18. Bless those who persecute you. Bless and do not curse them. Rejoice with those who rejoice. Weep with those who weep. 
live in harmony with one another. Do not be haughty, but associate with the lower. Never be wise in your own sight. Repay no one evil for evil, but give thought to do what is honorable in the sight of all. If possible, so far as it depends on you, live peaceably with all. That's hard to see during this time in our story. More the reason to refocus on him even more. Romans 12, 14 through 19. It said, Beloved, never avenge yourself, but leave it to the wrath of God. For it is written, Vengeance is mine. I will repay, says the Lord. To the contrary, if your enemy is hungry, feed him. If he's thirsty, give him something to drink. For by doing so, you will heat burning coals on his head. Do not overcome by evil, but overcome evil with good. This payday is not for us to seek. We wait for the return of Jesus during this time. When he comes, only then will we be fully restored. It will be as God intended it to be. The new heaven and the new earth. So until then, come and join him on his mission. Open your mind and your heart. Allow the Holy Spirit to guide you and teach you. Why are you? Renew your mind and heart. This transformation is daily. It is a daily pursuit. Know what you believe, why you believe it, how to live it, how to share it. Share it with someone who may not be like you. Share with someone this basic story information, creation, the fall, the redemption, and restoration. Real simple. So if you are a believer in Jesus Christ, you should know why are you in your life. If you're not sure why are you, or even if you're looking for more, then maybe today in the day of your accepting the call to follow Jesus. Second Corinthians at the first and second verse, it says, Is God's not, not to receive as God's co-worker we urge you not to receive God's grace in vain for he says in the time of my favor I heard you and in the day of salvation I helped you I tell you now is the time of God's favor now is the day of salvation If you ever choose everlasting life, place your trust in Jesus. Put your faith in his saving grace and confess you are a sinner in need of a Savior. You will be on your pathway to understanding why you are. The reason for which God created you for, you are a child of God. And all God's people said, Amen. God is good. And all the time. Let me close in prayer. Gracious God, it's so easy for us to forget how our life was going nowhere and how we live without purpose, peace, courage, or confidence. Your word gives us hope. Your son came into our life. We often fail and fall back into our old ways. We often lead into our old habits and seek our own ways. Thank you for forgiving us whenever we backslide. Thank you for walking with us. Lord, help us in all our words and actions to be the light to others. Let your light be reflected through us and around us. Use us to be the hands and the feet. Let us serve others. Be with the people in the storms in the areas of the southern part of our country or without homes, and the injured and the sick. Be with our cities as they are, some of them are suffering consequences not unseen in years.
just be with all the people. Just allow love to take hold and bring peace and joy. In this name, I pray, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Well, let's stand up and sing. Stand up for Jesus. <laughs>
Now, I would give you guys about a C right now for the expressions and the voices I'm hearing. I want us to make it an A. We're singing about the coming of Christ. Christ shall come. But let's sing this last verse. When Christ shall come. 